So welcome back friends. I've got a very exciting video for you today. We're going to take an in-depth look at the amazing Yanmar Fire Tractor. As you know that we live in the urban interface and as more and more people move out of the city into the country in, and in those in forested environments or even grassland environments, wildland fire is becoming a huge problem. And it's gonna come down to you to save your property and all of your stuff. A lot of us have been trained and taught that we need to rely upon the professionals. And yes, there's a time and a place for that, but resources are limited. And I have seen many house burned down or property or barn or building destroyed for lack of a guy out there with a shovel. So you're gonna have to make a decision when the sheriff's office sheriff's department comes to your house and tells you that you have to evacuate that's not necessarily true you do not have to evacuate you need to make that judgment call and that's going to be predicated on how much uh, knowledge you have how much uh, effort you've put in in clearing your space and taking precautions to defend yourself so i'm not telling you what to do there is a time to evacuate for sure but there's also more times uh, that a guy would be better off to stay and fight uh, and defend your home yourself because it's not always going to happen uh, if you leave it up to someone else. So it seems to me that a tractor is a really great platform uh, to defend your property for, from wildland fire because if you have some land you probably already have one and if you have a front end fork attachment something like this small skid unit here is just ideal. So this is a QTAC uh, 125 HP and this is a self-contained uh, wildland firefighting skid unit. It has lots of capabilities that make it really perfect for, for this application. Uh, it's got a 125 gallon tank, which the nice thing about it is that is not too heavy for the front of the tractor. I can lift this and move it around full of water. So I can carry it around on the tractor. I can load it into the back of a pickup. I can put it on a trailer. I could do just about anything. I could take it down and drop it down by a creek and pull a draft with it with a hard suction. And it just is super, super versatile. And the tractor is fast enough with the, you know, with the highway gears uh, that you can get up on the freeway if you needed to, or the, high, the freeway, the country road, if you needed to go over to your neighbor's house and you could be there really quickly. The nice thing about it is we already have a tractor. We don't have to buy anything special apart from the skid unit you probably already have the front forks so what I've done is I've just taken some heavy-duty tie downs and, and tied it down there um, and then it's set up as a skid you can see just like a pallet that you can pack it around so what we have here is great capabilities we've got a Honda engine uh, that runs a water x high pressure this is over 100 psi pump uh, that supplies a one inch hose line and a three quarter inch hose reel the cool part is we have the ability to pull a draft. What that means is that we can pull water from an exterior water source uh, if we run out because 125 gallons doesn't last a long time. We're talking about initial attack here. We're talking about being ready to move on something super fast and put it out. This is not set up for a long drawn out campaign fire. Probably the handiest thing and one of the most useful things on this is a is a foam system. It's got the fo Scotty foam system. So you can put uh, uh, your your class foams in here and you can, it'll inject that and that makes your water go a long ways. It breaks up the surface tension on the water and it just gives you, it just makes everything go so much further. So that's what makes this super cool. Here of course is our water fill. If we go around over here, we've got our hard suction line and then we've got a fast attack line. This is a, I am think it's about, oops. 50 feet uh, a fast attack line and the reason why this is so uh, nice to have to have a hard line like this is you don't have to unroll it and it's it's always charged and it's ready to go we've got um, a nice uh, firefighting you know kind of a basic bale nozzle on there so if you need to move quickly you can pull right up on a fire you can yank this out and you can attack the fire immediately without dragging and charging hoses and if you need to pick up and move it's super quick you grab the hose reel you roll it up and you can go this is probably the number one thing you're going to go to unless you have something that requires a little bit more water now if that's the case then we're going to go over here to the one inch so this is a one inch uh 
uh, outlet uh, that is going to supply the hoses and all of the stuff we have at the back. So let's take a look at the back. I'll show you what I put together and how it's going to work. Another thing I want to mention is if you don't have a tractor, a lot of guys will have a UTV or a side-by-side. -side. You can get these skid units that ha basically have all the same thing with just a little bit smaller tank and they can size it and you can set that right in the back of your UTV. And that is a super capable a piece of equipment that would go a long ways in protecting your property and they're so light that two guys can actually grab it if it's empty and sit it in the back so you don't need any special equipment now if you're going to hang a bunch of water uh, heavy stuff off the front of your tractor you need to have something heavy in the back so a counterbalance or put your mower on or something to 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 counteract that so what i have is a a weight box on there and why i've chosen that over a mower or a rototiller uh, is that it gives me the ability to be keep the tractor very compact and really vital storage area for some stuff and equipment that I really need. A tractor weight box by itself is not super versatile, so I've done some modifications that have made it very versatile. So first thing I want to have is a chainsaw, uh, especially if you live in timber. Having a saw to, to help you with different fire problems or if you got trapped, uh, trees fall down, snags fall down in fires all the time, you might not be able to get out. This is something I would not want to be without. Now I'm not going to carry a bunch of gas and oil too much. I'm going to carry two extra uh, MSR bottles, one with bar oil and one with mix in it in case I need a little bit. But I'm not, this isn't, I'm not out there fighting fire for 14 hours. I'm, it's, this is fast attack. Um, I need to get, get at something very quickly um, and that's what I decided to do. So I just took some of this heavy duty plastic. I bought this at a, at a at kind of a junk shop one time that was uh, dividers for uh, bathroom stalls and I bought a whole bunch of it and what I did is I just took and I sandwiched this and routed it out I've got a video on it if you're interested and made a scabbard for my saw that I can just simply drop it in there I don't have to fool around it's very very quick now on the inside I've done some pretty important changes as well so to make the weight box actually usable what, t what t guys will typically do is, is they'll just fill these full of rocks or sand or what dirt or whatever they have uh, to counter counterbalance the weight on the front. I have uh, put a false bottom in it with using that same plastic and gave myself about a six inch lip. And this, this is so helpful. I mean, if you have a bunch of rocks and dirt in there and throwing your equipment in there is not ideal. So I put heavy rocks in there and then I welded tabs around there and I set this down there so I have a storage area. So in here, what I have is 500 feet of one inch hose. So that will get me away from the fire pump an extra 500 feet because you're not going to be able to get to everything. You might have to drag into the woods if you've got a fire or a lightning strike that, that is in a place that's inaccessible. So 500 feet uh, for a single guy rig is a long ways. And the one inch line is actually manageable. You start getting inch and a half line. Um, it's just without multiple guys, it's, it's really, really tough. So that gives me 500 feet. In addition to that, I've got another... Uh, what do I have? 50, 250 feet of this three quarter inch forestry line. This is called toy hose. It's basically a single jacketed, uh, like a garden hose type of fitting that we use in wildland firefighting. So that, that could push it out to almost 800 feet uh, that you could get out of fire. Yeah, is it a lot of water? No, but you don't need much uh, oftentimes when fires just start up. This here is the Scotty. This is the uh, air foam nozzle. This is what uh, you put on the end of the attack nozzle. It injects air with the class, cl I think it's class B foam, um, and lays a foam blanket down. So this, this is called an inductor, and that's what this is for. We've got a couple wands uh, that will hook on the end of the toy hose, as well as some really key fittings, which I'll show you here. As far as fittings go, this is what I've chosen. This is a forestry nozzle, and this is a one-inch nozzle. This will go directly on the one-inch line, and it's a really, uh, it's a great nozzle because it's very, very very miserly with water. It, it doesn't use a lot of water. Uh, it helps you. It's easy to get excited and drain your tank. You're better off to be really, be really careful uh, with water consumption. What's cool about this is it gives you two options. You've got a straight stream, so you've got a nozzle you can flip over there and have a straight stream, or you can flip it over here and have a bit of a spray nozzle. Now, if we need to put tons of water on there, of course we have the gate gate nozzle that is already mounted on the unit. This is a more of a mop up or you know dealing with really small stuff but this will make your water go a long ways. Also some splitters so we can split that toy hose if your neighbor comes over or if you if your wife or your kids are going to help you uh, you you want to have multiple hoses that you can cover so much more area and you can split things up and just gives you more options. I'm going to have a, a bunch of these shutoff valves so if I need to add additional hose I'm going to put these things in because you get the 120 pounds of pressure and and you need to add hose onto it you don't have a clamp or any way to shut it off that's a huge problem so you want to have that 
We're going to have a couple extra nozzles. We're going to have some adapters. We need to be able to go from three quarter to one inch or one inch to three quarter. And we're also going to have, this is a water thief, so the ability to put this on the one inch line and pull off of it as far as laterals. It just You wanna have a few options so that you can cover as much area as possible. And for goodness sakes, have a fire tool, have something, have a shovel or a hoe. You don't have to have anything fancy. I would, if I had to choose one or the other, it wouldn't really matter. I, I'd probably take a hoe. A hoe, I, I have seen guys, I've rolled up on wildland fires, they're out there with their tennis shoes on, their flip flops, trying to stomp and kick a fire out for lack of having a fire tool. Many of small fires have been put out and prevented from spreading into huge conflagrations uh, for, for a timely uh, attack with a, with, with a shovel. Uh, also, make sure you have the things you need, your personal items, you know, don't, don't go out there with your flip-flops on, you know, have, you don't have, if you don't have Nomex, wear long jeans and have some leather gloves and have a cotton long sleeve shirt. Don't wear anything that's going to be polyester or synthetic or really flammable, it'll burn to you uh, and the cotton will save you a lot. Wear your heavy boots and, and have a hard hat if you're working in timber. Have yourself a backpack, you know, you, if you don't have a dedicated fire pack, uh, a backpack with some water in it, some things, you might be out there for four or five hours and you're going to be really, really thirsty. So the time to put this stuff together is now, not when you see smoke uh, in the lower 40 acres and, and you're scrambling and it, what, what was a quarter of an acre that could have easily be managed with a, a shovel uh, is now uh, five acres and completely out of control and threatening your house and your neighbors. So now that we put the fire tractor together, let's talk about how we use it. So you gotta have a plan. So my primary concern around here is going to be grass fire. Yeah, we might have a fire in the timber, uh, but that's a long ways from the house and saving timber versus saving a house is a whole different thing. So grass is the biggest thing. That's what's gonna be around the buildings and that's what's gonna catch up, get the siding on fire and all that. So grass fires move fast, super fast. I've seen them move. 60 miles an hour, so you have to be able to be really mobile. So to have something and to stop and to get out and to put out the fire doesn't do you very much good. You need to be able to move along with it. So this is commonly done out here, um, and that is bringing your attack line into the cab. Because you may be doing this by yourself, so you need to be able to move quickly. So you can go right along the black, right along the fire edge, the area that's been burned, and with, put your hand out there with a the nozzle and drive along and put out hundreds and hundreds of yards of fire. So let's uh, fire it up and I'll show you how it works. If I'm going to have a fire, it's most likely going to be down here in a pasture in this taller grass. Lightning strikes, someone could be dragging a trailer chain, who knows, throw a cigarette out. So this is my primary concern. So what I can do here is we're going to start the pump up and we're just going to turn it on and we're going to open this reset valve a little bit so it, uh, we don't lose all of our pressure but we also keep the water flowing so the pump doesn't burn up. So what I'll do is uh, just, we'll fire it up, full throttle. So here's how I'm going to attack it if we get a fire down here. You'll get that grass burning along. If you stay in the black, the unburned stuff, you're safe. It's not going to burn again. So you can go get yourself right down in the black and then go along that fire line. I, I've got the tractor set on cruise control. I can just set the idle up a little bit and I can pull the bale and I can go along here and I can put that out. I've seen a lot of guys do this with fire engines, you know, type sixes and pickups and such. And you can just go along as fast as you want to. One guy can put out a lot of fire this way and prevent that from coming up to the house. 